Hello everyone, my name is Jason, a year one medical student at Hong Kong U. Today I'm going to show you how to memorize everything that you want for school, for university, or for any upcoming exams that you have. So here's how your memory works. Once you learn and remember something, you gradually forget as time goes on. A phenomena and a curve that can be plotted is called a forgetting curve, in which your memory of that particular topic will always gradually decay. However, that memory could be quickly reinforced if you do any active recall of that memory and the curve will go back up and shoot back up and then gradually decay again. So this phenomenon, this curve is called the forgetting curve. This is the fundamental principle of how you can remember and memorize anything for the long run in your long term memory. The principle of space repetition. You're constantly spaced out the way that you remember that particular topic in which it will reinforce your forgetting curve and hence reinforce your memory of that particular topic in the long run again over time. Now, how do we carry out space repetition? Well, one way you could do space repetition is simply for a topic every week or once in a while just to reinforce it. However, it's really hard to calculate exactly what time that curve is dropping down significantly and needs recharging or reinforcement. And it's really hard to keep track of all the topics that you have in your exam because the exam is just not one topic, right? It's got a lot, a lot of topics. So the way that I swear by and a lot of medical students swear by is a program called Anki. Now Anki is a flashcard program primarily using a space repetition algorithm. As I've said before, a space repetition algorithm that does the space repetition process for you. So for example, this could be heavy biology content, poetry, language especially, medicine, law. So what Anki is not suitable for is application type questions or application type topics like mathematics or physics and those require practice where you constantly constantly practice which is the idea of active learning. However, behind every practical question, there's always some sort of theory behind it. So Anki is amazing in nailing that theory. Where do you learn the theory? Well, you have to memorize the facts and the knowledge. So I really, really highly recommend using Anki. I've been using Anki ever since I was in secondary school, doing mathematics, chemistry, doing chemistry, biology, and physics. To put it down simply, it's just a flashcard program with a built-in space repetition algorithm. Like any other alternative flashcard programs like Quizlet or just using just plain old paper flashcards, you make the flashcard with a question in the back. And with Anki, there's all sorts of other card types besides a simple flashcard type, which I'm gonna talk about. Besides that, basically the Anki program will calculate the amount of cards you have to do every single day. And as you, as an active learner, you have to complete all the cards per day. And after every review of a car, you have to rate it how well that you've done it. Again, you rate it either hard, easy, or if you just got it wrong completely, and the Anki will automatically calculate when the next time of the card will be shown to you. This is at the trough of the forgetting curve where you have to be reinforced of that memory. So instead of you calculating when your memory and reinforcement have to happen in order to have that spike in the forgetting curve, Anki does it all automatically for you and that's what I love about Anki for long-term memorization. Once I open Anki, this is the interface that I get. This is my Anki profile and I've got a lots of lot of different types of decks. So you see as you Anki, just simply go to Anki web online and you can download Anki, which is a free program, open source program on the Mac and Windows. However, on the phone, if you really want to review Anki on the go, there is an Anki app for iOS, which is actually really expensive, around 20 US dollars. On the Android, it's free. And I do recommend uh, the Anki mobile app because I do use it very frequently to review my flashcards on the metro, on transit, on any dead spaces, any dead time that I have, I can just review Anki. You can have like a, a shortcut on my lock screen that goes directly to Anki. Until you make it a daily habit, the Anki mobile app is not worth it yet until you've built a like, consistent routine with Anki reviews. So you've downloaded the Anki app on a desktop, this is the interface that you get. I have it the dark mode turned on. A settings, go to Anki and go to preferences. And you can see here, you can change the light, 
dark or full system i have it full system so my system's in dark mode and i prefer dark mode it's just easier on my eyes as you can see you have a default deck a deck is basically just a compilation of flashcards of a certain topic so for example if you're studying for your next chemistry exam this could be like thermodynamics or be for example organic chemistry and be a compilation of organic chemistry flashcards within that particular deck so when you open Anki, this is the interface you have. You might not have this, this portion and the events and the activity data here because those are add-ons, which I'm going to talk about later on. And also your top bar probably won't have the Anki mode. You won't, will just have deck, add, browse, stats and sync. Also, your Anki version might be different. I have the latest Anki version. I've always preferred the latest Anki version. However, the problem with updating to newest Anki versions is because if you do have add-ons, which are these mods that modify the Anki's functions, it could break them. So yeah, I do try to have the either the latest Anki version, but also making sure that all my add-ons are updated. Say you have an upcoming chemistry exam coming up and you really, you need to have a lot, lot, lot of facts memorized. So the first thing that you would do is go to create a deck, right? So I'm going to call this organic chemistry. Yeah, so, but this could be anything that you're trying to memorize. It could be languages, Spanish, law. This could be absolutely anything about any topic. It could be about economics. It could be about jokes even. You can memorize anything. That, it's not even academic in here. So for me, I'm just gonna pick organic chemistry as an example. But for me right now, obviously I'm doing a lot of medicine, but the same principle that applies here. So let's say if I click onto it, as you can see, it tells me that I finished the deck because I don't have any flashcards. And in order to add flashcards, I'm gonna press the add button with the key A, yeah? And you can see that a new window pops up. You will have the basic note type. So as you can see at the top, you have type, which is basic. And then you got deck, which is what deck that you have enclosed. And you have the front and the back as like a normal flashcard, you got front and the back. So the front way is where you put the question and the back is where you regurgitate that information and the answer out. And you have a lot of formatting options here, which is fantastic about Anki. You can insert absolutely anything you want, lecture slides, notes, diagrams. You can also tag, include tags just for better organization if you've got thousands and thousands of cards. You can also organize using decks within decks within decks within subdecks. So I prefer using that, but tagging is also a really, really good way to organize a bulk, bulk majority of cards. So let's say you want to have a question. So let's say, what is the condition for free radical substitution of alkanes? Yep. So I've put a question here at the front and then I could just put the answer under UV light. Yep. And this is basically a flashcard. So I just press add or command enter and that would complete adding the flashcard. Let's add a few more in just so it's more realistic. I could have what do secondary alcohols oxidize to? Hopefully I still remember my high school chemistry ketones. And yeah, so that, that, those are basic type flashcards. Anki also com uh, comes in a lot of different types of flashcards or notes, note types that they have. So uh, not only with basic flashcards, you have something called close. Close is basically an over fill in the blank type of flashcard. So you could say, for example, benzene ring is planar in shape. So if you, re if you need to be able to re regurgitate the planar as a fill in the blank question, you can just simply press that and press this button here, which adds a closed type. As you can see, it basically adds a bracket for that and it'll make it a fill in the blank type of question. So let's say I want to study organic chemistry. I just press study now. And as you can see, it'll just show me the ones the condition for free radical substitution of alkanes. Mm, let me think. Is it hot? Oh, well, I got it wrong. It's under UV light. So if I get it wrong, I just simply press again. And as you can see, when I press again, it shows me it's less than one minute. So show me the card again in one minute. And all these settings could be customized in the Yankee settings. So if you're not happy with it, with the timing intervals, you could always customize it. I just leave it as default because I think the algorithm itself, the default algorithm is pretty good. If you get it hard, it'll show you again in six minutes. 
and if you got it well you will show you in 10 minutes and you think it's really easy it will show you again in four days yeah so let's take what the secondary alcohols oxidize to ketones so i think i did pretty well so i'm gonna press good as you can see here we have this close type fill in the blank flashcard and it, it blocks out what it is in the middle the benzene ring is plain iron shape and i'll show again and then the question comes back again because i forgot about it so i have to remember oh with this condition under uv light secondary alcohol ketones benzene is plain iron shape and under uv light and that's it so that's a review session done Usually a review session is around, for me, 100 to 200 flashcards and uh, is quite a lot to get through. Uh, but it's really, really amazing because it allows you to associate a question to an answer. And as, as, you, as time goes on, as you practice more and more, as you see the question, you can instantly think of the answer. Like in an instant, you don't even have to think. So it really brings and tightens the association between the question and the answer. And this is especially useful for language learning as well so so that is basically a fundamental fundamental feature of anki so i'm going to go over to my to my anki and show you what add-ons or mods that i have in my own anki so for my anki as you can see i have a ton of ton of decks most some of the decks i i downloaded them online through anki web which is basically a shared community of all these amazing people sharing their Anki decks. So you don't have to create decks on your own and they range from all sorts of different topics, all sorts of different languages. And it's really, really amazing. So you can see I got this amazing deck called Dope Anatomy, which has these amazing anatomy image occlusion flashcards. So as you can see here, so let's say I go to the Forax and as you can see this anatomy flashcards, what is being shown at 10 and that is the accessory heavy as i guess vein and it's got this background information here and it's got this amazing diagram from gray's anatomy and the answer here so it's really, really good i don't have to make my own anatomy flashcards here i just, just get it online these amazing people have built it all for free for us and yeah if we go here what's being shown at one well is that the costal cartilages yeah those are the costal cartilages and I, again, I press different buttons or shortcuts on the keyboard. One, two, three, four. So one for again, two for hard, three for good, four for easy. And they basically allow me to easily, quickly go. If you press space, it defaults to good. So you could also go through a lot of different flashcards if you think that really well, you just press space. And yeah, so you, that's shared Anki decks. I really highly recommend you Google some shared Anki decks if you like. I also have my own Anki decks in A-level chemistry, biology and physics, which I'm gonna link down below if you do A-level. And as you can see here, these are my own decks and I've sorted them by lecture slides. So different lecture slides. I have different decks, different sub decks. And within the sub deck, I have cards for each lecture slide. So today I've completed all my reviews. In the morning, I've completed all my reviews already. So that's why it's all zero here. I've done 587 cards in 1.31 hours. So the typical day here. So let's go through to the add-ons. So the first add-on I have is add table in the add screen. I could have a table just like that, inserting my columns and it'll have a table. It's really useful. I could have like in the table, I could have a close, like a fill in the blank within the table. And it just gives me like a little holistic view if it's like a conceptual flashcard, like comparing different types of stuff. So the add table um, and all these, again, all these add-ons, you can find them in the Anki add-on page. Anki moat. Anki Mo is this add-on here and basically it shows a QR code and I could just scan the QR code and basically what it allows me to do is I could complete Anki reviews from my phone. As you can see here, it basically outputs it like a controller with a right and a left button and depending on how I tap, I could like long hold the right, short hold the right, long hold the left and basically all corresponding maps to the four different buttons the again the hard the good and the easy i could lay back like this and let's say i'm reviewing this deck here i could lay back and just press the button here it's actually really responsive as you can see lingula of the left notch i got it wrong press that that is the left coronary or right coronary artery and the great cardiac post 
to your interventricular branch. So as you can see, it's really responsive, actually really, really good. And basically I can just lay back without using your keyboard and just review flashcards on the sofa or something. So uh, yeah, that's Anki Moat. The other type of program that I'm used for Anki controller setting is called Cunt Anki. Yeah, Cunt Anki is control support for Anki. So now that I don't really game and have time to game much, I treat Anki as my daily gaming session. So I've got this DualShock 4 PS4 controller and basically I just connect it to my MacBook via the Bluetooth parent settings. If I press my Anki, as you can see, DualShock 4 connected, I can see all the mapping. And again, you can change all the mappings in the settings of this add-on. And it shows me which button maps to which button on the Anki interface. So again, let's go through some flashcards here. Common viruses for central nervous system infection. And again, I go through the flashcard and I could just press the X button to review the flashcard. And then if I think I got it wrong, I press square and I'll review again, again. T lymphocyte, I can use again, again, again. And if I think I got it well, I just press, let's say good, which is X. Again, you could map this to your own liking. And what's awesome about this is I could maintain like a good posture and sit down and I don't have to slouch. I could just put my controller, like for example, beneath the desk and just use muscle memory and use this finger here just to review. And it just makes the review sessions just more fun and less boring and just less tedious when you're reviewing flashcards. Also, I have a really small little add-on I have called events. And basically I could just put in like exam and in a specific date, like, I don't know, 21 of 2nd February. And what happens is that it shows me a countdown to the exam. So every, every time I go into Anki, I see how many days left till that exam. And I could just like make sure I'm accountable and basically gives me that little surge of motivation to do the Anki reviews every single day. And there's a really popular add-on down here called Review Heat Map. Now Review Heat Map is basically a really, really motivational add-on as you can see that it basically shows your entire view of the year and each grid corresponds to one day and the lighter the color more cards that you do so as you can see i could see yesterday or today i did 593 cards it's quite light day before 279 the day before on thursday i got did 30 so that's why it's so bright and again the really cool thing is that it actually shows you a streak and I'm currently on a 10 day streak, but the longest streak I have is actually 135 days. So that's pretty insane. But yeah, just keep making sure it's that not breaking the chain type of motivation and making your Anki reviews like a daily habit. And uh, yeah, and just really nice to look at. It's quite visually appealing as well. This, this bit here, this little screen in the main page, which you don't have, is from an add-on called more deck stats and time left and basically just shows me my time left in my review if i'm going at the pace that i am which is 7.5 cards per minute i have 132 minutes more to review finish reviewing all the cards in my daily reviews and it basically shows me these deck stats like studied how many cards in how many hours per day new cards i have left learn cards learn cards are basically cards that you're currently unfamiliar with two review cards, basically cards that you've done before but are popped up again in today. It's a review and the reason why I have so many is because that's piled up that I've not done before. And the total new cards and the total all of them combined together. If you were to only get one add-on, I highly recommend is Image Occlusion. Image Occlusion is basically an add-on that allows you to block out parts of an image or a diagram and make that a flashcard. So for example here, let's go into uh, just a random deck I'm going to add. And basically what it allows you to do is it ha adds this little button in the formatting bar. And I could just easily pop up a diagram for example. So let's pop up a diagram if I can. Yeah, let's say here. I've got this really complicated neuroanatomy diagram. Basically what it allows me to do is I could just like, block, for example, block out that and block out that if I really want to learn what that is. It just really allows me to easily memorize anatomy in this sense. Another, another really useful one I have is called Pop-Up Dictionary. That Pop-Up Dictionary basically allows you to select like a word within 
that flashcard and it'll show you all the other relevant flashcards, the cards within that deck. It gives you a more of an idea of linking different concepts together and I think that's really important as you go through your reviews you realize oh wait I haven't I learned about that in another type of class card so it is really really cool allows you to link concepts together instead of just one individual isolated facts pop-up dictionary allows you to see within that keyword where does it also pop up in other flashcards cards within your deck and I think that comes in really clutch sometimes. So that is my overview of my Anki setup, how to make flashcards my add-ons and how I make it extra effective in my day-to-day -day routine. Remember, for efficient long-term memory, make sure you actually review your flashcards every single day as Anki recommends to you for that active recall and spaced repetition. If you want to learn more about my life as a medical student, feel free to click here and I'll see you guys in my next video.